Welcome to What's Now. I'm your host, Christine Napier. This is a show where we talk about new products, great research, advances in different diseases and causes, all these great things that you are going to want to know about. And today's show is no exception. We're going to focus on the health of your pets, your own health and wellness, especially your skin and nails. And we are also going to take a look at an iconic series that has a return, but it is reimagined. So many things to get to, but up first, we're focusing on our pets, especially Lyme disease. It's something to think about even here in Utah, and I had a great conversation recently. Let's take a look. Lyme disease is a growing threat this year in the U.S. While the disease affects both animals and humans, it's one of the most common tick-borne illnesses transmitted to dogs. Although we're only at the beginning of the 2022 season, the Companion Animal Parasite Council predicts that Lyme disease will continue to expand through the country this year. Joining us to discuss the high-risk spots for Lyme disease, along with strategies for pet owners to protect their dogs against the disease, is Dr. Chris Adolph, a veterinarian specialist in parasitology with Zoetis Inc., a global leader in pet care. Dr. Adolph, thank you for being here. Hey, it's my pleasure, Christine. Thank you for uh, having me on. So tell us more about this growing threat of Lyme disease. Yeah, so this is a thing that has been uh, in existence since, you know, been studying this stuff, but the Campaign Animal Parasite Council makes, you know, really accurate forecasts and basically is saying it's going to get worse, not better, right? So when we look at uh, areas in the, in the Pacific and the mountain time zone, uh, we've got a slightly different tick than over in the eastern and central time zone, but very closely related, very capable of spreading the bacteria that causes Lyme. And so when you look at Utah specifically, um, you know, around 6,000 dogs were tested last year, and you guys had 17 positive cases, okay? So while that one in 300 uh, rate is not like it is in Pennsylvania, Connecticut, it is a growing threat. And I had the pleasure of coming and speaking at the Utah Veterinary Medical Association meeting uh, about four years ago. And when I was doing my digging and doing my you know, background, uh, they're seeing more and more people in Utah positive that don't have a travel history. This is not like they went to Pennsylvania and got it. They got it right there. And so the state health department was at that time making it a reportable disease. Okay, in Utah, right? So uh, we think about it like when you go down the coast of California, of Oregon, of, of uh, Washington, but the ticks are actually, you know, you look at the pattern, it goes up through Arizona, it's going across Las Vegas and then coming up into Utah. So while it's not the heavy threat it is on the Eastern coast, it is a threat for Utah, no doubt. Where are the highest risk spots for Lyme disease? Well, when you think of the, uh, you know, wicked high areas, it's, you know, Maine coming down through New England, going into, you know, North Carolina, over into New York, Pennsylvania. And then another spot is like uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then kind of coming around those Great Lakes and, you know, causing some problems for those upper Midwest folks. But then you go over, like I said, to the to the Pacific time zone. Uh, Oregon, you know, uh, Washington, California, and then getting into Utah, even seeing cases in Western Colorado. So, uh, you know, the veterinarians in this area are like, "What? Well, that's not a problem here. Well, there was a time when you could say that, but with the uh, growing threat, man, we got to have this on our radar. What are the latest and best protections against Lyme disease? Okay, so for dogs, great answers. For uh, people, yeah, less great answer. So for dogs, uh, there's a once a month medication called Simperica Trio that in addition to covering things like heartworm and some intestinal parasites, that's labeled for flea and five species of ticks, including one that transmits the Lyme bacteria. And in addition to all of that, there's a claim that it will block the transmission of the Lyme bacteria by getting the tick dead in a timely manner, okay? So in areas of high risk, vaccine is also available. So this one two punch is doing a lot to keep your dog from suffering this terrible, terrible disease. For people, 
We don't have a once a month. We don't have a vaccine. So we get to tuck our pants in our socks and we get to spray with repellents and spray early and spray often because uh, they don't last a long time. So for dogs, great answers. How can pet owners detect or observe if their dog has contracted Lyme disease? Yeah, this is a little tricky because uh, the outward signs, if you see them, you know, you don't want to mess around. You want to get to your veterinarian. Things like limping, fever, uh, drinking lots of water, going to the bathroom. But there's a lot of things that cause that. So your veterinarian's got to, you know, run that down. We absolutely want to screen our dogs on a yearly basis. This is how most are found. And most people are shocked, shocked, I tell you, that the dogs are positive because they've never seen the tick. And it's because there's the size of a freckle or a mole, and it's very understandable why you would never see a tick on your dog, yet they would test positive for something like this. What is the most important takeaway that you want us to know about Lyme disease and protecting our dogs? <clears throat> if we remember one thing tomorrow from what we're hearing today, <clears throat> we want to know that there's monthly protection available. And if you want more information on that, you can go <clears throat> to simpericatrio.com. That's S-I-M-P-A-R-I-C-A, trio.com, and get tons of information on the things we've talked about today. Additionally, your veterinarian should be able to talk to you about all of these things as well. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Chris Adolph, for joining us today. Really appreciate this important information about Lyme disease and our pets. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on.